You've, no, got, look, you've got the top I'm... of your paintball gun caught on your jacket and all of the paintballs have fallen on the floor. You are cooked. You are done. Give it up. Everyone going all day. Give Rubbish. It Give it up. Hateful. Yeah. I'm going to go straight in with highlights of the weekend. Guessing you're not going to choose that lovely little Ollie Watkins dinker. No, I'm not. Funnily <laughs> enough. I'm going to... It is Midlands based, though. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for uh, Morgan Gibbs-White setting fire to his relationship with the Wolves fans. <laughs> yeah, in absolutely In possibly the most extreme yeah. example of definitely celebrating against your own, yes. own club that we've seen this season. Like, absolutely really purposely. Amazing. Yeah, just really, like, get fucked you a lot. Just yeah. really... Yeah. Just really going for it. I'm not actually... A youth career that was nine years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he did play um, a fair few times for Wolves. 68 times. Yeah, there you go. I'm yeah, on the wiki. Exactly. I'm, I'm clearly A fair few. <laughs> there's context I'm missing that I'm mm. happy to go without yes, because yeah. it's far funnier if I don't know. Mm. But it, it was fantastic. And then mm. him and um, Mateus Cunha kind of... Uh, not quite having a spat, Cunha kind of doing Gibbs White celebration when he scored, mm. and the two of them appearing to be like the absolute best of friends <laughs> after the game. Despite mm. the fact, I don't believe they've played together. They no. must just know each other from the area, which is Mor odd to Morgan, me. Morgan Anthony Gibbs White, uh, I'm on the Wikipedia, mm. uh, is, uh, was born in Stafford. <laughs> Like, he just hates his town. <laughs> he hates the people who live in it. He hates his previous football team. Mm -hmm. What is this all about? I, I love it. It's, yeah. it, it, it. I'm sure Wolves fans are going, oh, it's because of this. It's, but yeah, yeah, I'm it, sure. But what I love, though, is the fact that, as you say, it was really premeditated. The way he kind of goes <laughs> to, to celebrate with the Forest fans, and then he goes, no, I'm not going to celebrate with you. I'm going to no, mug, mug this you off. off. Like it was, it was so like, where's a? Give me all the bridges and I'll burn them yeah, all. With that these maybe they've been giving him some stick during the game or in oh, previous I'm sure. meetings. I'm sure it's sure it's related to that. But like I say, I'm sure someone will fill me in where I'm sat right now, knowing yeah. nothing. It's it was Delicious. fantastic. Yeah, wonderful, mm. wonderful stuff. Peter. Well, you mentioned Indiana Jones earlier. I did, yeah. <laughs> um, a fan well, at the Saudi Super Cup uh, final lashed an Al Idihad <laughs> player with a whip. <laughs> In yeah. a whip. This sounds exaggerated. I can't bring a pint <laughs> but to the not. ground. <laughs> I can't bring my Walkman to the ground. No. And 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 they, that guy's allowed a whip. Beautiful. Did he didn't, park his horse outside? Didn't technically uh, invade the pitch though, so it's fine. So this yeah. was this was you changed a, your tunes so a, quickly. It's a perfect <laughs> hooligans. You're, into, you're all, all for this sort of stuff now, aren't it's you? It's a perfect <laughs> hooligans tool because you're not entering the field of play, so you're not going to get a banning order. Yeah, and just absolutely whipping people from from a few meters away. Yeah. So the player. Yeah. During this high-profile Saudi Arabian football match, mm. does he go over and throw water at the fans? Yeah. So I mean, it, there's an argument to say that the player was involved in a fracas, but oh, yeah. um, the, the the man he, was he brought very... a glass of water to a whip fight. <laughs> he did, he did, he did, <laughs> the whip is yeah. mightier than the cup. Yeah. I mean, I just want to see more of that. When I was in, uh, you <laughs> want to see more of? That? I want to see more of this. I think you're in the right place, mate. I, <laughs> I just think I, um, when I was in uh, Zimbabwe uh, doing some charity work, don't want to talk about it. Um, the, the a man, a man uh, showed me his elephant whip, and right. that was about the size of yeah. a, a limo. Did you run off and go chase me? Yeah. <laughs> just to see what you do. <laughs> it's just the noise of it was beautiful. I just want someone to bring an elephant whip to. Uh, okay. I don't think that's an actual thing. A man just had a long whip, and he said it was an elephant whip. Maybe the length of the to... whip. Is, yeah. Is, okay. Elephant size determines what animal you're going <laughs> to use. The length it of a trunk. Jason yeah. Tindall with one to motivate anyone. Oh, to beautiful. Well, he's not allowed in the technical mm -hmm. technical area when the manager's in there. So yeah. yeah. What other traditional Saudi practices do you like now? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good good vibes. Just they, they just do things right out there, don't they? they? Just do things right. Is that uh, a new watch? <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it in here. Tea leaves. <laughs> oh yeah, the Arsenal and the Fulham fan. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. He was born in Essex. Oh dear. I know what they're kind of like now. just don't trust new money, Jim. I don't know no. about you. Yeah. Um, uh, my highlight of the weekend. Well, going back to uh, Forest v. Wolves, I mean, that couldn't you goal. Yeah. I should specify the first the one. First one. <laughs> <laughs> Second one was a proper bundle it in. Mm. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right. Um, we've delayed the inevitable enough. Let us go to the top of the Premier League because Manchester City ended the weekend top of the league after beating Luton Town 5-1 on Saturday. So fucking angry about it. Um, <laughs> but, of course, the shock of the weekend really was Liverpool 0, Crystal Palace 
1. Liverpool have lost consecutive games at Anfield for the first time since 2021. Pete Donaldson, <sighs> last-ditch defending and missed chances were uh, the story of that game. It's story of a lot of games at the, yes. t- the top of the league, uh, aka uh, Arsenal. But, um, it, I mean, this is Man City's transition season, and I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to get angrier and angrier as this show goes on, yeah. the more I think about how people are just throwing this away. But, Chris Palace, they just used their quickest players in transition just really, really well, and they just absolutely... Mm-hmm. Liverpool are off form. Um, Crystal Palace were incredible. Uh, Glasner took um, Elise off mm-hmm. to save him for the next game. That's how good <laughs> what a Palace were. Yeah. I mean, he's coming Liverpool back were. from injury. But... I know, but yeah, it's a, but they usually you would rush that player back and have him play every minute. Well, that was the problem though against yeah. uh, uh, Brighton. I can't remember who it was against right. uh, when when he was. But if you're going to use him, if you're going to overheat him, it's going to be in this match against <laughs> mm. uh, Liverpool away from home and. Uh, my God, they were just fantastic. They yeah. really were. They looked, look, they made Liverpool look very, very awesome. Well, the goal they scored was a beauty. Yeah. It was a lovely move, wasn't really it? Really calm finish from Ezra as well. Mm. I mean, just what a player. I mean, I feel like we're praising him every week and so we should be because he's just so much fun to watch. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and Mateta had chances as yeah, well. Yeah, that, that, oh God, like, I mean, Andy Robertson like <laughs> got that one off the line. If, if that had a little bit more pace on it, that's 2-0. Yeah. And then, then that point blank save at the end, which you have to say, brilliant goalkeeper from Allison, even oh. though it's right out, he's still got to get his hand to it. Well, there were some great saves at both ends, really. I mean, that was maybe the pick of the bunch, although Dean Henderson would feel perhaps aggrieved. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it was remarkable there was only one goal scored in the game, mm. um, especially from, from Liverpool's point of view. I mean, they've had 67 shots and scored twice across their last three games in all competitions. Darwin Nunes has the worst big chance conversion rate across Europe's top five leagues at 20%. He's had his criticism um, and he'll have more of it in, in, because of these um, the last few games. But they're not scoring goals, Liverpool, in the, in, uh, of late. You know, there's yeah. so many chances. You know, you think of... And those three games, you know, Manchester United, my goodness. You know, even at Atalanta, they lose 3-0. They, they still have loads of chances. And this one, it, if you're a Liverpool fan, you're a bit concerned. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, blips happen in seasons, right? It's about how quickly you get over them. Stop doing the blips at the same you know, time, stop, teams stop at the top. Yeah, Share you know, the that, blips is, out. that is annoying. Isn't it? I, mean, <laughs> I strongly agree on that. Yeah. Um, but it's surprising how blunt they've become in front of goal. Um, and one of the other issues they have that's compounding that is they've they've managed to get 27 points from losing positions this season, which mm. is a, is amazing. That's a huge amount. Yeah. But going behind catches up with you eventually. Well, I wonder yeah. if there's an element of th- that absolute that what you've just said there, Jim. Not a case of being found out because they're a very good side. But you mentioned Man City are in a transitional period. Liverpool way more I mean, so. Man City just won the treble, I think. Yeah, you know. but they're changing out. They're having to change out some older players, aren't they? There's a I few that, have, that have come in, you know, yeah. Kovacic and uh, and Doku. And, and, a few and young players coming through, I guess. Yeah, so so I understand. But but Liverpool certainly the obvious ones in transition, Yeah, you, you would say. And I, I did wonder that, Jim, as well, that it would sort of catch up. But when you say catch up, again, that's no disrespect. It's not a case of the, the sort of the plucky underdog or or the um, side the unfancied side who are kind of in a title race until mm. November December and then just the quality of the others because the top of the Premier League now you have to be immaculate yeah. if you're going to win the league the standards that essentially Guardiola and Klopp as well have set are so ridiculously high we've never mm. seen this before that you just have a couple of bad results and suddenly woof yeah I, I also think you know winning three 0 can take less out of you than winning 2-1 after you've gone 1-0 down and mm-hmm. had to do it late. Like The, yeah. the, the energy reserves that takes. Is, this this, this it's, picture is being it? seen again and again with Liverpool yeah. this and, season. And I think they? that's possibly that's kind of caught up with them a little bit in terms of this little run where they've, they've not been able to score and they look mm-hmm. a little bit less like themselves. Like the Atalanta game was, was they looked like a different team, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. They've got the majority of their first team players back now as well. So perhaps Salah's some of them firing, are getting back he? up to speed. That's probably part of it. He's obviously mm-hmm. not um, not at his best because he's you know he needs the, the run that he's currently having now to get to the mm-hmm. to that's a possibly there's some unfortunate time in there and you know sometimes a team just defends really really well against you and there's nothing you can do about it yeah. some of that Palace defending was absolutely exceptional yesterday that clearance from, from Mitchell towards oh, the my end goodness. saving Henderson from having to do anything was, was top mm. class like really really strong and it, sometimes that just happens yeah I know what you mean Mitchell in particular I mean it seemed like <laughs> every time the ball had left a Liverpool foot and you thought, well, that's on its way. Mitchell was like, yeah, I'll do the def- the goalkeeper's work for yeah. him. It was Klein it, as well, getting in the way of one where you thought, surely this is a goal now. Against his old club. Against his old club. Yeah, indeed. What's the last thing you want, though, if you've lost a game and an important game and you're feeling quite down? 
Is it a tweet from Liam Gallagher taking the piss out of you? <laughs> I don't know, Marcus. Enlighten me. <laughs> yeah. Let me hear it and then I'll make a judgment. To all you... I mean, I'll, I'll have to add the punctuation and sure. stuff in. Um, to all you Liverpool fans giving me verbals, I love it. Bring it on. And just remember, I'm up there with your beloved Shankly. Oh, in heaven. <laughs> How am I doing, you prick? <laughs> <laughs> I have achieved, I've won things. Your little memes won't win you trebles or a residency at Nebworth, so sit down. A residency at Nebworth. Just confusing. <laughs> two, nights, two nights. Just confusing. MCFC, LG, Kiss. Fantastic. So, so many, um, to be fair, KC94 um, mm. uh, quite beautifully wrote, you sold 74 tickets on your USA tour. <laughs> <laughs> I bought 73 of them. Mm. Yeah, he's, he has still played Nebworth though, hasn't he? Yeah. So, mm. Paul Dickoff says, no, that's what I call a super Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Lovely. Yeah. Good on him. Good on him. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, was, it, was a, it was a stunning result because on Friday when we previewed this game, I was thinking... You know, well, Palace haven't won in goodness knows mm. how long. You know, they're not scoring that many goals. That um, and and Liverpool, despite that loss against Atalanta, you know, surely this will be a reaction from them. Da di da di da, yeah. and you you punch it in, and well, it's, well, it's a stunning result. Well, but... once again, sorry, Jim. Uh, once again, like Klopp was like, I, the way he reacted to the goal was like, oh. Oh, this is happening again. This yeah. happened in midweek. <laughs> Why is it happening again, Jim? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Even even the best teams get in periods where scoring a goal feels impossible, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think they're just, you know, in one of those phases now. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, and, and, and you know, we should remind everyone they are just two points off Man City. You know, we can yeah. wax lyrical about Man City and say how, how how wonderful they are, and of course they are. They'll do their Still own waxing. To be, well, they will. Um, but Liverpool, they're still in it. You yeah, know, of dis- course. D- despite this, of course, but. It, <sighs> It, God. It, there is an inevitability <laughs> about uh, how uh, everything is uh, playing out. Well, it's easy to make that assumption, isn't it? But we don't know that for sure. Yeah, because of all the facts and situations and experiences we've had in the past, Jim. Yeah, I mean, Jim. Liverpool go to Fulham next, which, as you know, is a disaster. Yeah, well, they're not going to get anything there. They're not going to get anything there. Well, when asked if Liverpool are uh, still in the title race, Klopp said the answer is pretty easy. If we play like that in the first half, why would we win the league? Mm. Mm. Uh, and... <sighs> I wonder if you get one or two sloppy results. Klopp is off at the end of the season. Right now, you would think he's now got to say, "Come on, lads, one last hurrah!" Yeah, you know the face. This one squad, last dance. one last dance. Mm. This squad, this whole thing we have now. This is it. Mm. This is all. This is this mm. is. Let's go out with a bang. If you see what I mean, because I yeah. wonder if Salah will will maybe leave in the summer, or I wonder if he'll, you know, the body language or something. Will he fancy the new change, considering how? brilliant it's been under Klopp for it you know there's are all the, these kind of questions are the players starting to just hear those kind of opening chords from a, a pumping Euro dance beat from Lineker's bar is that oh, what is that what we're talking about the, on the beach the, yeah. are, the t- are the tools loosening in their grip or the crack of a Set Saudi down whip them. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I yeah so Klopp is you know he wants mentality monsters. He doesn't want mentality minions. No. And he's got to turn this around because we know they've got the quality. We know they can score the goals. It is now his man management and that emotional side of things. Yeah. He's got to get get a, get a big old grip of that and, and, mm. and turn it around because otherwise they'll finish the season with just the one trophy, which would be impressive. Don't get me wrong. You know, winning that, obviously, I think yeah. Klopp said it was a special one. They'll, they'll always have that. But go, when you're going for four... I guess the thing with the Carabao, it's great to win it, but they've celebrated it, right? Yes, exactly. it's so long ago. Exactly, it's, exactly. They want another one at the end. Indeed, indeed. Uh, elsewhere in the title, of course, Arsenal lost 2-0 at home to Aston Villa. Two fairly late goals. I say fairly late goals. It was about eight minutes of injury time, although the fans who left on the 89th minute clearly didn't realise that. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, they were the only two shots on target for Aston. <laughs> And Villa, and and that that's what won them the game, Jim. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I don't think that tells the full story of the game though, because Ollie Watkins hit the post in the first half with a, was very unlucky not to score. Tillemans and chance Tillemans hit oh. the bar and the post. Yeah. Even, not even in target. your dark Arsenal heart, would, would you kind of want to go that in? That, that, Obviously that not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. <laughs> it hit bar and post, Jim. And I enjoyed that a yeah. lot because I got to see the ball hit the bar and the post and then there wasn't a goal. It was hard for a bit. Uh, yeah, it was looks... funny that. It feels like you never see that very yeah. often and then two in a week. And then bang. Um, but they don't count the shots on target. They, they do not. But, but still, it <laughs> does. It, what I mean by that is saying that they scored with their only two shots on target sounds makes it sound like they weren't in the game, but they were in the game. Yes. Uh, it's a very a, a frustrating missed opportunity from Arsenal. <laughs> but if you look at how the game went, you, you just have to praise Villa. Um, you could spin it another way and say, well, actually, Villa beating Arsenal at the Emirates that can happen because Villa are a good side mm. we know really good side whereas 
Palace beating Liverpool at Anfield is yeah, far less likely. Exactly. So yeah. it's just I think it's annoying for Arsenal that just the chronological oh, order I, of it. D- don't get me wrong, I think Arsenal should have won that game. I think they should have had what it takes to navigate the challenges that Villa posed because they were on top in the first half. Oh, the chances Arsenal. in the first half. Well, I think yeah, yeah the, Trossard's got to score. I'm I, I agree. It's a good save from Martinez, but it's too close to him. Yeah, he, he needs to put it anywhere else. And I, it happens. It happens at speed. It's a difficult thing to pull off. But I agree. Like that. That should have been one nil. The the other chances weren't weren't anywhere near as clear cut as that and Arsenal did well to to make a lot of them but part of the you know the, the sort of um part of what made Villa so good was that they don't give you a lot of time in the box Arsenal mm. spent a lot of time in in Villa's box but they 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 made sure they had to pretty much rush things mm. quite a lot or just mm. or do something spectacular very quickly they marshaled that very well their offside trap was exceptional again they've been really good at that all season and part of Arteta's um game plans this season has, has all been about control and controlling the opponent however Arsenal themselves are playing, whether they're sort of sitting a bit deeper to defend mm-hmm. because they know that the, the opponents are having a moment or, or whatnot, just essentially being ready for lots of different styles of, 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 of play within different phases of the game. But Villa managed that really well. They, they figured it out in the first half in particular. And then they just kind of, they shut Arsenal down really, really well. They, they knew a chance would come and it comes from a sort of, kind of lapses of concentration it's hard to sort of pin on anyone with the first goal in particular I think Saliba should be more alert to that ball rolling through and he should get rid of it no one's picking up Leon Bailey and we all know what a brilliant season he's having he's probably the most dangerous Villa player on the pitch at the moment and perhaps Declan Rice can be a bit more aware of him but it comes from a slightly chaotic moment Villa capitalise on that really well obviously the first goal mm-hmm. but the second goal um I suppose happens when a team is sort of chasing but a game suddenly, but, but the second it was still pretty sloppy. The second ultimate is poor from Arsenal because it happens in the 87th minute. Mm. You've still got, you know, we know injury time, you've, you've got loads of it. Yeah. So there's still a good 10 minutes it's, left. It's a very wayward ball from Indeed. Jorginho who's still getting up to speed in the game, I think. And I also think, it, this might be slightly harsh, but I think Emma Smith-Rowe has a lot of time uh-huh. to try and sort of shepherd Watkins away or, or do yeah. something there. But my point about there being 10 minutes better. left, it's, it don't... A draw is you're one nil down, and there's, there's not that much time left. I understand push, 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 but don't push to ridiculous levels like there's just two minutes left or three minutes. You know, just yes, you've got to go for it. Um, and I know you, you know, three later are... scored in the 70th minute or something, like yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. I just because because you've, you've been picked mm. off before on, on, on the break, and you know what Watkins can do, and he's a wonderful finish. I mean, these are all little things. First half, Arsenal should have been up at half time. There's no two ways about that. Yeah. But Villa, when, as you say, when they come out in the second half, Emery said, if, if, if they learned from the Manchester City game, if we just want to play deep and just try and hit them on the break without having much possession, it's going to be a long old day. And, and he said, we had to get possession back, and they did. And they were doing it without perhaps their first choice sort of centre midfield. I mean, Tielemans and McGinn were fantastic yeah, in the centre midfield. Really we know they're, they're quality players. It's something else to see that arse in person. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened, Jim? Was there, did, did you pop down <laughs> the dressing room? Yeah, yeah. It just kept, just kept moving. Did it? <laughs> Whip it. Um, <laughs> the, 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 do you not think that it was just kind of Arsenal just in a situation where... Uh, their most clinical finisher seems to be Kai Havertz, and even then, he does most of his good stuff at um, international level. Which is like, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're, just kind well, of, that that that, that, that sort of um, uh, a lot of like, observation, a lot of, of like Arsenal. smashing it into the near post instead of putting it across the goal. Well, yeah, again, point, I think was that like... was a, a lot of that was to do with how good Villa were at shepherding those kind of angles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Arsenal scored a lot of goals this season. They've shared them around. There was a there was a chat a few months ago about how they need a sort of clinical goal scorer. Mm-hmm. Um, that will probably be addressed in the summer. I think Jesus is, is not at his best. He's not, um, in terms of his form, he's mm-hmm. been talking about carrying a sort of pain in his knee and will probably have surgery again in the summer. Right. He's, he's not been as good as he was last season yeah. for, for whatever reason. And I think that's that's starting to show now as well. Mm. I ju- but, I ju- it's just, this whole weekend has just been a massive missed opportunity. Obviously it Frustrating. has. Frustrating. But you're done. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You're cooked now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you think it's Manchester, like, City's? Manchester City. Manchester City are just—they yeah. are up yeah. mm. at 4 a.m. mining Bitcoin with Jake Humphreys, and everyone else <laughs> is having a little snooze. They don't even have a chair. Let they them have a comfy chair. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no need. The Stand bed, bed of nails. Around. A bed of nails. It does yeah. seem an inevitability about Jack Grealish is planning his fucking sesh. That's what he's doing. May I remind you, though? Manchester City still have to go to Craven. They Cottage. do have to they go to Craven Cottage. Cottage. The, the kingmakers are mm. still are still at play, aren't they? So let's have a let's have a look at this. The games that City have left, they all look winnable. You got mm. Brighton away, Forest away, Wolves at home, Fulham away, tricky, Spurs away, West Ham at home. Spurs now Spurs have, Spurs, have, Spurs have given them trouble before, but you don't mm. want to be relying on that. Yep. The Spurs will have a lot to play for going into the you know penultimate game of the season. You think so? Maybe and. 
If they, they win, if, they, if they win all those games, <laughs> that's a nine-game winning run, which you know not many teams manage. But Man City aren't mm. aren't most teams. Nine-game are they? winning so runs not much. For it them. doesn't seem like it's <laughs> outside thin. the realms of possibilities. I would say. Thin. So it's yeah. yeah I mean, th- 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 you're, you're hoping that something goes awry in all of these games, and then Arsenal win every game. And Liverpool are hoping the same thing as Jim, well. Can I say that is wonderful politician stuff? If you were to Dropped spin it, it fully, that well, Manchester City will have to have a nine-game winning run if they want to win the, win the title. Whereas Arsenal and Liverpool, of course, only need a six game running run they want to run the rest of their games you've got, no, no, you've got just, the top I'm... of your paintball gun caught on your jacket and all of the paintballs have fallen on the floor you are cooked you are done give it up everyone going all day give rubbish it give it up hateful yeah. hateful so, end of the season I leave on the you leave it. on the 84th you minute you had fella. it <laughs> You had it. Like the, like the guy sat next to me. <laughs> Oi, he got it right, though. <laughs> he got home before uh, any of you. He probably did, yeah. Yeah, look. Yours I, is the only craven cottage around here. Hey, how hey. dare you? Why? There's only one. Hmm. There's only I know one. it's named after a man, but like, well, craven cottage is hardly. I mean, what? the word craven is like. I know what you mean. Yeah, but like, do you know what Cottage softens it, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, that like it used to be a hunting lodge, cowardly, man. Cowardly, isn't it? Yeah, it but it's like lodge. people. Animals used to die there. <laughs> Who would hey. animals with a tail? Maybe that's what it's named after. They'd chase them in there. <laughs> yeah, you cow, you crazy little rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> it's Crover Cottage, just a big abattoir. It, uh, oh. Well, I tell you what, there's a joke in there somewhere. Um, so find it. But this is exactly the stuff, though, that Arsenal and Liverpool have to get out of their heads. They can't be like, yeah. oh, it's they done got now. It in their oh, it's today. done now. Yeah. Well, yeah, they did, and they have name. to. They have to. Like both Klopp and Arteta spoke about how you react to these things, yeah. being the, the measure of what your season's going to be. So, uh, as, get Mikel as... on the phone. I'll give him a little pep talk. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll tell you what, like that though. fellow that cries. <laughs> yeah. Did, did we talk about this? I can't yeah, remember. We the TikTok yeah. man who yeah. cries. Yeah, um, uh, love him. Unai there's, also, there's also another maniac in. Uh, oh, really? Sits a new one. Sitting in his Range Rover, doing like inspirational. Sort of like oh, you, I've seen this. I've one seen as like well. sort of inspirational. You are amazing. You are amazing. You, don't know. you are a beautiful woman. And they're all focused on women. Weird, yeah. oh. weird men of TikTok. I may become one one day. I don't know this man, and right. I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> uh, um, but I do know um, Unai Emery, and he is now finally talking about Aston Villa as. Um, as uh, contenders for Champions League qualification for next season. A thing that's been lost amongst this weekend, actually, is if you take it in isolation, mm. the ding-dong between Spurs and Villa has been fantastic this season. Yeah, it's they been keep good. sort of swapping places and you, it, one of them blinks and then yeah. the other one does as well. Mm. And it's, 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 I, it's really difficult to, to know who's going to finish fourth or fifth yeah, well, I, mean, I was looking at the, the when when Newcastle beat Spurs, which will come on obviously too. Mm. Um, uh, I was like, oh yeah, well, maybe we'll get closer to like ten points behind. <laughs> I was like, God, that's a big old gap, isn't it? Indeed, yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's very much between the two sides. Yeah. who will finish fourth, of course. And uh, Ollie Watkins, nineteen goals for this season, mm. second behind uh, Erling Haaland, of course. Arsenal no, Harling, supporter. Haaland. So, can you trust a snake like that? <laughs> on <a plane? laughs> that's true. That's true. It's true. That's a great return. Emmy Martinez said he should be Player of the Season. He's got to be up there in the conversation. I mean, I know. A lot of people would have Phil Foden, Declan Rice, um, yeah. and there's others, of course. But Maybe he just meant Villa. Aston Villa player of the uh, yeah. season. Yeah, Aston, it'd be harsh if he didn't get that. Yeah, I Martinez think. did say, "I still love Arsenal. I came here as a young lad and left as a man." I didn't want to see the sign language for that. Like <laughs> what he's got in his hands, what he's waving around, what yeah. he's humping. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, loves it, doesn't me. he? He absolutely me. loves it. Um, Jim, we've often said that when players leave Tottenham Hotspur. They go on to win trophies. Yeah, you you you, you can you can count them. There's there's a there's a fair few. Um, has that role now reversed? Harry Kane left Spurs. He's in trouble of not winning a trophy. Mm. Granite Xhaka left Arsenal. He's won the Bundesliga. It's delightful. It is incredible. Lovely isn't it? story. A, a part of a big part of the Bayer Leverkusen side who have been phenomenal this season. The Bundesliga. Mm. Everybody knows this. Uh, they beat Werder Bremen five 0 to win their first ever Bundesliga. <laughs> big Granite scored in the five 0 yeah. win, and he is now without a doubt a Bayer Leverkusen legend because that team will be there. There will be plaques made of this yeah, team yeah. in Bayer Leverkusen. The first time they've ever won the title. The way they've done it, and it's. It's glorious, lest we forget. Not that long ago, he was being booed off yeah. the pitch at the end. Feels a long time ago. Now, now. I know, mm. obviously, he, the Arsenal and fans and him, you know, um, rekindled their love for each other. So I don't want to be, mm. be be disrespectful to anybody or anything like that. But winning the league with five games to go, I'm not surprised um, that he's getting his flowers because I mean, he sort of leads the league for touches and various other sort of impressive yeah. metrics. He's been all action and yeah. that was how he played in the last two seasons at Arsenal in particular after he sort of shifted his position um, and I'm, I'm delighted for him 
but for, also just for Leverkusen as well. It's it's not like this is a team full of um, you know huge superstars. Is it? Yeah. There's a lot of like really surprising players in there, like Nathan Teller as well. What a story there mm-hmm. coming coming over from from Southampton and um, and, and 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 making a contribution to to, the, to this historic team. It is it is a beautiful thing to behold, and they've won it in such style. Mm. And to you know. It took a while, didn't it, for them to really press home their advantage. But in the end, they won five nil, and <laughs> that that sense of release and relief at the end is is decades in the making. Oh my, and, at what, least. Like, it, I know, like um, Zidane sort of won a lot of stuff very early on into his managerial career. Just like bang, he had a Champions League or whatever. Yeah. Like Alonso, this bearing in mind that where that team were when he picked them up fighting relegation this has to be yeah, it's, it's one there. of the great managerial performances yeah. and it's one of the things that, it's Roy Keane at Sunderland <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a, there was a shot where uh, Xavi Alonso was celebrating he had his hands up and his, t- his shirt and his jumper was lifted up over his sort of belly button and, Be- oh my god beautiful those, that little line oh, you get it, towards the pubis he, <laughs> hello yes please sculpted how does he sculpted. find time to work out I know like managers are Managing their football club or sleeping? Mm. <laughs> Is he sleep exercising? I have no idea. <laughs> but he could still do a job. Healthy body, but healthy He doesn't mind. need to because he's doing the other he's job really, doing, really yeah, well. so well. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. All right, coming up in the second half, we've got Newcastle hammering Spurs, Manchester United failing to impress again, and a tale of frozen milk. See you in a moment. <laughs> By the way, from somebody who suffers with tinnitus, I wasn't making light of that condition. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I've got a lot of problems with my ears. Pardon? <laughs> I've walked into that one. <laughs> well, back to the football ramble. Neil Lennon on a five live there. Bit Trust of banter. Read in the room. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to friend of the ramble, Jam Hands. There he is again uh, for sending us that clip. You can become a friend of the ramble too by heading over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. You'll also get access to the Discord where you can chat with us and other ramble listeners and get ad free episodes of the ramble up front and on the continent. Patrons on the Discord pointed out that blimp was the word of the day on Wordle yesterday. Oh, does anyone still play Wordle? I, I've given up. Um, I fell out on my dad, so we don't do Wordle on our WhatsApp group anymore. Not now, Peter. <laughs> uh, click the link in the show description. I miss you, Wordle. Up. Not dad. <laughs> Can we get into this on, on Wednesday? I'm, I think, I think it's, a, it's a ramble uncut conversation. Uh, whereas, Jim, I feel that this needs to be brought to the, to the ramble public's um, attention. Mm. I got a text message from a, a friend of mine called John. And this is a call to arms. There's somebody out there, I think. Well, I'll let you be the judge. Right. I'll let you be the judge. I've got, this, I've got this text that I'm going to read out verbatim, verbatim. Today, sat in a well-known Brentford restaurant, I overheard a mother calling their slightly naughty child. It didn't really sink in until the second or third shout, mm. but the child was called Speller. Yes. Ah. The kid kept running around and kept being called back. Speller, Speller, Speller. On the last go, I made eye contact with the mum who smiled. I saw my chance. Speller, that's an unusual name, I said. Thanks, she said, assuming I was complimenting her. (laughs) (laughs) The mother said, he's named after some guy my husband likes. Oh, Oh. really? Who's that? I don't know. Some bloke. And I just wondered... (laughs) Wow. What is happening here? Was there a speller from Big Brother back in the day? Oh, stop it. Oh, come on. Famous Um, spellers. Let's have a look. I mean, there's not many. There's not many of us. I'm trying to think. It's a rare name. Wizbit. He was a famous speller, wasn't he? Oh, that was back in the day. There was like... I'm, um, yeah, I'm a not little s- monster on, uh, on on BBC Two. You go into uh, these lengths to deny education. me. I'm, I'm, I just... I've googled Speller Big Brother. There's nothing. I right. think, I think Spencer. you are the leading candidate here. <laughs> leading Speller. So I guess we're putting out not a call to arms. I think a call to no. arms is wrong. Right. Yeah, uh, I've worded have that you, information. Have I've you worded done your... that poorly? <laughs> <laughs> have you done? Because your familiar... there can only be one. <laughs> have you done your familial empire dirty by calling your son or daughter Speller? Yeah, uh, if yeah. you're in the Brentford area. Yeah. <laughs> or in fact, are there any other spellers out there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a generation of us. I don't know. I don't know. Fascinating. But, uh, yeah, genuinely fascinating. Worrying. Right, let's go um, to something that uh, we can all um, get our heads around. Newcastle United 4, Tottenham Hotspur 0. It's happened again. <laughs> it's happened again, mother. 
<laughs> oh dear. When there was oh. those two quick goals scored, I thought, here we hey, go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Rub of the hands. Oh, Pete Donaldson. What a lovely time I you had. I didn't. And we laboured to a 1 0 win. And you thought your Spurs were going to win. And I did. I did because we laboured to a 1 0 win against your lot. But Van der Ven, like, he just had his little bit of carpet out. He was well, doing he was, break dancing. He was yeah, about the was. chaos. <laughs> Remember when we were talking about the chaos? His dad's uh, uh, what, a detective or something. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah, yeah. And he said his dad told him to embrace the chaos. Yeah. Of all, everything around you yeah, I mean, not that much spinning spinning around on his face well yeah. he's more like a chalk outline on the floor wasn't he <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was um, and that wasn't vanishing spray really no. surprising performance from Spurs obviously you've got to give Newcastle their credit as well but it, obviously in a game that one sided there's, there's always an element of the opponent um, Jim isn't that, isn't that surprising well. each for, of for, Tottenham's past three Premier League defeats by four plus goals have all come against Newcastle at St James's Park yeah for, but you know that's None of those were under Postacoglu, obviously, who's, who's changed a lot of the culture of the club and a lot of the style of the, the, the badge way they remains, play. Jim. Indeed, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the badge conceded four. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. Uh, I was, I'm very surprised by it. Mm. Can I say that Alexander Isak, he's a, he's a rich vein of form. He is a he is a, a cold finisher when he wants to. Yeah, be. absolutely. And that stare he's got. Mm. If you were in, if you were in the wild, wild west. And someone said, "You know, we're gonna, you, you, you're gonna have a, a shoot, you're gonna have a shootout." Yeah. And you looked up and you saw him staring at you. You'd be like, "I'm dead." Yeah. Just shoot, dead. Me, now. <laughs> Just shoot he's, me now. He's possibly Sweden's longest man, isn't he? <laughs> and that's that's part of it. I think. <laughs> uh, Ibrahimovic, he's, but his legs are so long. Yeah. He can. He just it eats up grass. Yeah. Like a long cow, bearing on, down on, on your goal. On like rest, Jim. With his There's a, li- a little, a little bit of, bit of that. There, yeah. He had very long legs as well, or yeah. still has very long legs, as far as I know. You do yeah, shrink. He will shrink. 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 Not yeah. for a while. <laughs> do you shrink from your back? He's going to look really weird when he's <laughs> older. Yeah. Short little back, long legs. And maybe one leg will shrink. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Kid daddy long They'll legs. They'll call him the haggis. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a, a great win for you guys. And, and he's, like, he's in fine form. Him and Gordon are just absolute yeah. dynamite. They're up, very top-heavy, top that side, but I'm loving that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving that. I mean, it, Anthony Gordon said it. I mean, sort of, you know, I, I doubt he'll get a mention due to, you know, maybe big team bias and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Anthony Gordon, for player of the season yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. yeah, he's really... He's, he's up there. I, don't, I don't think I would have him winning it, but I think at least the briefest of mentions. You know, right, he's Emi been Martinez. Br- yeah. <laughs> he, he has, he's done what he's been brought in to do, hasn't he? Because he was very impressive at Everton and he really caught the eye. Mm. But I think Newcastle were hoping... Is it fair he hoping. got out while the going was good? He sure did. <laughs> or, the, or while the going was not that terrible. But I, I think there was a sense from Newcastle and part of the reason they spent the money on was on him was this is an improving player, like a rapidly improving yeah. player mm. who can come in and and make a significant contribution if he continues his trajectory. And he's mm. done that. Yeah. He's fit that brief really, really well. I also think he's got an, a proper England career ahead of him. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. And he this they looked a bit like the Newcastle of last season, really, didn't they? Mm. Not not just because of how, you know, efficient they were in front of goal. They look really hard to play against. Mm. Like they're just Physical, just big bastard, and all that you know. It, Bruno Guimaraes isn't that tall, but he is a big bastard somehow. Yeah, yeah. he was seen counting the score on his fingers to Giovanni Lo Celso. Uh, yeah, he went one, one two, four. He didn't do three for some reason. Why, well, just, What's he got easier, Isaac, Isaac easier with a hand though, isn't it? Yeah, Getting are you sure? Yeah, part. no, but, they, yeah, but maybe not. Actually. No, but no often, he didn't do thumb. He didn't do thumb. He didn't do thumb. No, he just went one, two, three, four. He just went one, two, three, one, two, four. Uh, mm, you want to mm. want to check the thumb again? All right, I'll check the thumb again. Yeah, have a little check. All right, I'll check see the if he did that because a lot a lot of people that lot around the world they do the thumb as one. Right. You okay. See, you know. Or maybe I just thinking glorious the bastards thumb. without giving right. anyway anything okay. away. Fine. Um, uh, yeah, but Isaac, uh, seventeen goals and twenty. No, he moved the thumb in. He had the thumb out, then he moved the thumb in to do the two. So he redu- he, he started with one. Yeah. Then when he did, got to two, he moved the thumb in, removing one from the field of play, and then he went to four. Did he? I didn't see the game. Was there a disallowed goal? Was it actually really clever? <laughs> well, I mean, he managed to avoid the uh, yellow card um, pratfall, didn't he? he, he did. to, uh, it's just sad, really. I was hoping to see that narrative yeah. come to fruition. Yeah, indeed. Um, before the uh, the game, Rio Ferdinand said the word shit oh, on TNT Sport. Yeah, he was being interviewed shit. by Jules, though. And uh, yeah. Not Bill Grundy. You know what well, she's yes. like. <laughs> was he being interviewed by Bill Grundy? <laughs> He's probably just picked up bad habits from her. Yeah, exactly. Go on, Rio, say something outrageous. <laughs> yeah, He's... I was about to say, don't tell people that, but then they can just listen back to old references yeah. of the ramble and Crap, just hear. Crap, her. she was giggling away. He <laughs> 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 will do. <laughs> That's what he's there for, isn't he? He just has a little giggle, doesn't he? Yeah, and exactly. he also makes um, the dynamic between um, yeah. him and Jules hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, great win for Newcastle, though, nonetheless. It was fantastic. Uh, the interesting quirk in that match was that um, Lewis Hall. Um, because of that match taking place, is now locked down. Oh, yeah. He signed on loan, right, mm. um, with a full move 
um, for like 25 million or something. Um, if Newcastle came 15th or, or above in the Premier League and that mathematically, that match, even though Lewis Hall was stuck on the bench yeah, uh, and he didn't play, uh-huh. uh, that's what on the bench means. He, yeah, he, he's locked down to a Newcastle contract now, I think. Good day right. for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah great day for Chelsea. Some money for him. So uh, yep. I, I was very impressed with Lewis Hall last season in the mm. sort of fleeting cameos I saw him make for Chelsea. I thought that was quite a good signing. Have, have you enjoyed what you've I seen think, of him? Uh, yeah, in, in flashes, I think um, I think the managerial uh, setup. Um, I think they just want to sort of introduce him a little bit slower, which is probably not exactly mu- music to uh, Lewis Hall's ears, but I think they're going to kind of slowly sort of bed him in at the mm. start of next season, I think, properly. Lovely, so, yeah. lovely. Uh, well, Newcastle are in pole position to finish sixth. Because they are. Manchester United uh, drew against Bournemouth 2-2. Um, they end the week in seventh. Um, so, yeah, Newcastle ahead on goal difference. Entertaining game mm. on the south coast. Uh, Bournemouth uh, maybe feel a little bit aggrieved with regards to the penalties and, and whatnot. Jim, what did you make of this one? Um, I uh, enjoyed it, obviously, because of the chaos of it. There's some, some impressive goals in it. I think Bruno Fernandes' first goal was, was great. Yeah. It sort of got lost among the noise of the weekend a little bit. I know like, really, mean. really like impressive <laughs> well, footwork. <laughs> it, was, it was as if it was the, the way he sorted his feet out. I mean, obviously, he's going to score if you've bought six yards out mm. and you've got a free volley. But it was just like, just get in, Come piss on. off. Mm. Yeah. You know, like it was like an adult tidying up, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, which he, you know, we've we've all got a lot of big opinions about Bruno Fernandes. Sometimes he isn't that adult. Sometimes <laughs> he's very petulant. Um, but he, he he led by example there. Mm. Um, but yeah, the uh, I mean, what do you think about the penalty? Which one? The, the Manchester United the, the, one. The Man United one. I can see why it's given. He's got a lot of time to stop that happening. Yeah, right? I, I agree. I, I think that a lot of people felt aggrieved by this Bournemouth in particular yeah. uh, and a lot of people disagree with that. I can't, I, you, you can't be that surprised that that's given I personally think yeah I, people saying he moves his hand towards the ball I actually think he moves his hand moves his arm out of the way and then sort of maybe instinctively reacts again somehow and it hits him <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, I'm surprised that you think that because um, you're not um, a supporter of one of the big six cartel clubs yeah <laughs> Because we we got the old corruption locked down, that was always going to be given. Yeah, but for, not, for, for one of us, yeah, but for one of our lot. Man United are in seventh. True, true. You know, <laughs> as it was, side, yeah. as, as it, it was put to Eric Ten Hag, um, that seventh Free would storming be, out. <laughs> yeah, it was seventh would be Manchester United's lowest ever Premier League finish. Now, did he storm out of this interview? Much has been made of this because, to me, he answers the question that's before that, which would be ultimately the penultimate question. Mm. Um, and he looks like he goes to get up as if to say, right, I'm, yeah. I, th- I think we're done. And then and then he's asked about this and he's like, oh, I'm not interested and walks out. So yeah. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah, yeah. he stormed yeah. out after but being if asked. I just do this now, <laughs> because at some point I'm going to leave. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it tells know, its own story. It becomes a storming out, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. If whether, whether he's getting ready to leave or not, he's, there's I, still an, an, a, you know, an element I don't of think professionalism that needs to take place. I don't... I, 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 storming out, I think, because... The storm, so you've got to stomp your feet. Exactly, the storm element has to be your anger. Whereas I just think he was just like, oh, I've had enough of this. Oh, right. All right, he gusted out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think it was a gale. He galed out the room. He galed out the room. Yeah, I don't think... He it... wafted out the room. Yeah, but Typical the, the, Manchester the, the, the... United performance. <laughs> Wafting out of the room. <laughs> Everything they're doing is entertaining. Waft. We have to yeah. keep the status is, quo. Yeah. yeah, It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Um, what do you think of Garnacho being subbed at half-time? Yeah, he's been a difference maker, isn't he? So it's, I can understand why a guy like himself was probably a bit miffed. He was caught liking um, cool. your friend of mine, Mark Goldbridge's tweet. Uh, which criticised Ten Hag and accused him of throwing Garnacho under the bus. I think um, he should be reprimanded for that. Um, and not like liking the tweet, just following him. <laughs> just, <laughs> just... Well, we're not sure if he follows him, right? You know, but okay. he did. He did endorse him somewhat. Uh, so yeah, poor old Garnacho, who's been one of the um, better players. You would, you would certainly argue. Yeah. What about Casimiro? Jamie Redknapp accused him of looking like he was playing in Soccer Aid, and <laughs> Jamie rude. Redknapp knows because he's contributed very well to Soccer Aid. Mm, yeah. Of course, it's a he fine. He looks like course. he's in a sketches advert. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do like those sketches where you can just put your. You don't have to have a, use a shoehorn or anything. Do you, you, you get into that age are you, where sketches are? I, I use a, I use a shoehorn uh, to get my trainers on, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just I just just putting your feet right in your trainers like that, amazing. Uh-huh. You can just jump. What in. an invention! Why doesn't all shoes have that? Off the top bunk into the trainers. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the day you don't wear trainers very often, do you, Pete? This is this is the world you're missing out on. No, I just want to get, I, I, but I can't bring myself to wearing to wear sketches because I just think it's works for Harry Kane. You've gone to seed. <laughs> 
gone to seed. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Casemiro, though. Yes. He is he is gasping. million pounds. Gasping for the <laughs> off-season, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He, He's 32. Yeah, and it's Give not him that a rest. Old. Yeah, it's not that old, is it? It really it, isn't. It, it, this whole... Th- this whole kind of situation makes it seem like he's like 35, 36 mm. and just like sort of, you know, spluttering to the end of his career. But but even if he was 35 or 36, like it's still yeah. like this is, he's like, is he injured or something? Like there's something. Maybe. Mm. There, there are times, you know, when, it, you know, it's, it's older gentleman where you're, you're on a run or, or, you're, or you're on a, you're on a, you're on a treadmill and suddenly your body goes, nope, yeah. nope, take that down, take that speed down. Yeah. I th- it feels like that's what's happening to Is him. Is it just because, I mean, does Ten Hag not trust anybody in that role? Do they not have anybody who's capable in that role? I, I don't know, but mm. I feel sorry it's for killed Col- a lot of careers, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't, it's. Maybe if they ask him questions in trainings, he just wafts out. Yeah, Perhaps. in a fury. Look, I so they don't know what to do. I mean, maybe look. I understand that, <laughs> like that, leaf. that uh, you know some players. You know, when they're playing for arguably the biggest side or one of the biggest sides in the world in Real Madrid, and I don't imagine start to say, "Hey," but I'm, you know, come on. Yeah. Re- recent years, you know, in success and so on, you know, puts an enormous shift in for them. Wins many trophies and so on. Manchester United can't be seen as a kind of a, oh, I'll just play my, tw-, you know, I'll I'll take it easy mm. and uh, you know put in the odd performance here and there. It's, it, it has to be different. The amount of money they spent on him and so on and so forth. Um, I know Varane came from Real Madrid and Varane was regarded as one of the best centre halves in the world. And since it being at Manchester United, you wouldn't put him up in that bracket. I don't think he's been terrible or anything, but you know, perhaps a bit of a, a drop off. Is it just such a basket case of a club that this happens? But then, I don't think you can blame no, I can't, the surrounding I... of Manchester United for Casemiro's perceived lack of effort. Yeah. And he's, you wouldn't say he was that type of player. He's hes old enough and experienced enough to know mm. that that's a piss poor shift. I'm just wondering, is there something physically yeah, limiting Yeah, I think him? it has to be a fitness issue. He's, he's, he's too, too experienced <laughs> a player, too good a player yeah. to, to, you know, if he can run, he absolutely will be. Surely there's well, surely uh, there's something, yeah. some energy conservation thing happening there. Uh, it, is, it is odd. And I just wonder if he's playing quite clearly at 75%, maybe not even that at times. Mm. But Ten Hag thinks, I can't trust anybody else to do that role. You know, we'll get hammered, etc. Et like if you think it's chaotic now. But I, I, at a I big think, club, surely been, you've got to have another play. You've got to have something. He's been tasked with like just getting possession back quite high up in the field. And I think at, at that age, it's a, it's a difficult uh, Again, only job to... He's a year old. He's a year older than Granite Jack, for crying out loud. Yeah, but yeah. he looks. He, I keep on talking about his big face. He looks like Cristiano Ronaldo at forty-three, getting what? a lot of Botox, and and, and that's where <laughs> Ronaldo will end up. I just know that. Yeah, yeah, but he'll um, still be ridiculously fit, Cristiano. Ronaldo. He will be. Yeah, uh, playing in the Saudi third tier or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. But he might get those. Um... Those um, ab implants, you know, <laughs> yes. like that paparazzi bloke got, Mister Paparazzi, Mister Paparazzi, Mr. Paparazzi. Yeah, Dar- yeah. Darren Lyons, I think his name yes. was. He got, um, he got like silicone abs oh, right, put okay. into his stomach. So, he gets so mentioned he... quite a lot on this show, weirdly. Yeah, yeah, because you, he's always he in your bins, isn't he? <laughs> he's not seeing what I'm up to. <laughs> you just eat what you want then, and the and the, the well, silicone yeah, takes yeah. care of it. Got a six pack. <laughs> Got a six pack, guys. It's like sticking way out. It'd be really weird. <laughs> it's like it's like the tip of the yeah. stomach. <laughs> well, like I can't. Think... crocodile. Pete, no doubt you know someone who can sort us out there. Mm. Let's all get down yep. uh, and, and do that. Uh, right. Well, it was a much better weekend for the women's side of Manchester United as they beat Chelsea in the semi final of the FA Cup. It mm. was a dramatic game and a huge upset in Emma Hayes' chase for a treble to end her time at Chelsea, just like Jurgen Klopp, of course. Um, you can hear all the reaction to that on tomorrow's Up Front with Chloe and Rachel. It promises to be a cracking listen. And of course, it was, it was great for Tottenham Hotspur as well. Mm. Uh, their ladies' team won. Right, uh, some promotion chat. Portsmouth were made to wait for their oh, return to the championship. Portsmouth. Put that milk back in the freezer. Yes, they, they needed to beat Bolton on Saturday to seal promotion, but could only manage a one-all draw. Now, on Friday, a Portsmouth fan tweeted a story about their granddad who froze some milk, a whole carton of milk and a big carton of milk at that, in 2008 because it went out of date when Portsmouth won the <laughs> FA Cup. 2008. I had some really old kale from the freezer yesterday. Right. Directly um, out of it? Or did you store it? <laughs> I thought, well, I cooked it. And did you, uh, you like I'm, a... I think that we can freeze things forever. You do I like decided. a frozen sausage, don't you? I do like a frozen sausage, yeah. But well, I think like, we can freeze things. Again, yeah, I don't, I don't do think we need to worry or... about... Uh, what, the frozen sausage? Yeah. No, back in the day, I remember when I was a kid, I used to eat oh, frozen sausages course, like, sure. a, like a lollipop. A meaty <laughs> lollipop. But um, I think it's... Um, I think we can freeze I wish forever. the listeners could have seen Jim's reaction to that. 
<laughs> but I quite like Jim I, likes a frozen double decker. I love a frozen mm. double decker. Watch your teeth and then you're away. It, yeah. it would be very interesting to see if Lukey e. Moore, who is obviously a big Pumpy fan, uh, but he's also a big Milky Tea fan. He is. Yes. He would make his tea milkshakes with the forbidden orange milk of uh, of this granddad's um, FA Cup winning um, Milky Milky Treat. Yeah. Well, I think I think he should put his. Milk, milk his mouth his mouth is. Is, I'm yeah. guided for him. Yeah, well, apparently yeah. he's gone too early, but I understand why he's done it. Apparently, the granddad unfroze it last week in the hope he could drink it to celebrate Portsmouth. Oh, Portsmouth God. promotion. He's I a don't, granddad. Don't, don't do it then. I don't understand why he went that early. Yeah. But surely you could. It could be. You, you could, could, he could unfreeze you, you, it in half an hour. Put it in a bowl of water. But you, you can't refreeze it though, can you? So you've got to. You've oh, got right, to yeah, time yeah, yeah. it so that it's because he, he's a man who seems to be a stickler for storage. Doesn't he? Yeah, exactly, Correct storage yeah. of milk. Hey, I mean, it is it is absolutely good because like, why on earth is he going so early with mm. that? Did you um, uh, speaking of uh, getting in the championship? Did you see uh, Marcus that the um, the boiler man West Brom mascot has been kicked out? No, I didn't see that. No more boiler man. Do you remember oh, no. the, the West Brom uh, uh, mascot? I can't remember. His combi name. boiler, wasn't he? Yeah, he's oh, like a, right. he's, yeah, a, he's yeah. a dancing combi boiler. Yes, I do remember. Uh, he was. Uh, he, he, I think he tweeted out. Um, as many of you have noticed, the mascot has not been out for a while now, and this is something that's been completely out of my control, and I'm unable to comment on the reasons why. Is it? We some need sort of... to go deep diving on the boiler man story. It seems an apt metaphor for the energy crisis. <laughs> it is, yeah, <laughs> there's not enough crisis. gas to cook me. Yeah, I should say that Portsmouth are playing tomorrow night. I think the milk's gonna kind of gone bad yeah. by then. Though. I mean, Strange. looking at the colour of it, it's gone bad. My advice to the it, to, but... to the granddad, if if Portsmouth do clinch promotion tomorrow night, is drink it, <laughs> drink it, <laughs> get it down. Drink you can't do that much harm. It's two thousand and eight. <laughs> wasn't that long ago? For go to A and E though. Yeah. Yeah. You go to A and E. Drink it there. Yeah, and then and then if you find great, if you're not, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> what are you in for? I'm going to drink this yeah. now. Um, can I? Can I? <laughs> I hope nothing happens to him. Marcus, can, before we move on, can I stick in a little bit of um, nope. mascot chat? Because yep. we obviously talk, spoke about the boiler uh, man. Yes, yeah. only moments ago. Only moments ago. Go on. Uh, got an email from uh, Dinny Outdoors. Uh, what a complete waste of my time, Ollie, as I've been listening to the ramble. Do your research, comes to mind. Oh. You lot made a very unfair and degrading comment about the state of Wolves mascot on the recent pod. Mm. Have seen better days and could do with a hot wash. Donaldson is a disgrace to football. Wolfie and Wendy both got a 2024 makeover having spent the last while raising their cub, Wilfred. Being new parents can be tough. And yes, they were looking a bit tired, but so would you, you insensitive toss. <laughs> please, please issue a retraction and an apology. Uh, regards, loyal Wolves fan and former Ramble listener. Don't back down. No, down. I'm not backing down. I'm double doing it. <laughs> starting to understand Morgan Gibbs White now. Yeah, I mean, they look raggedy. It's just, it just... It's because their fur looks like it's got sick on it anyway. Mm. I just think Have you it not could... heard a word the man has just said. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but it's baby sick. I honestly, Maybe. yeah. I, I, it really annoys me when I have to come to Pete's defence. Yeah. Because I think to myself, <laughs> I'm going to be indicted somehow. Yeah. But Pete's right, though. Like, if, if, a, if a baby does throw looks, up on you... It looks matted. Yeah, if, if a baby does throw up on you, obviously that's bad. Mm. But, like, by the third day, you should have washed that off. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I think that mm. I think that they could have put themselves in the hot wash, as it would steam be. Steam it. Case. Steam the steam mascot. It. Somebody, or somebody at that club, help them out. Steam the wolf. For Granada, out get, out some, yeah. get some um, um, a disposable wet wipes there. Don't yeah. push plus them down the toilet. If you do that, you're a disgrace. Mm. Bad um, week for mascots. Um, at half time, Gunnosaurus um, throw up. Has, <laughs> well, he, <laughs> kids take penalties against him and he right. saved the couple at the weekend. Yeah. Just, get out of the way. <laughs> they, yes. put, they buried the rebounds, but that's not the point. Maybe he was trying to get out of the way, Jim. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Uh, we should end. Like a comet. We should... Couldn't miss that fucker, could you? <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, we should end with T Wrexham uh, getting promoted at the, nice. at the weekend. Nice. <laughs> nice, clever they, boy. They, <laughs> nice. They beat Forest Green Rovers six 0 on Saturday to achieve promotion to League One. That's how you do it, Pompey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what that, a romantic story. Right, this massive cash injections at that level. Their second promotion is as many as yeah, but it's a, but it's a we, it's an actor. It's a feel good story. It is, story. yeah. It's a couple of actors. Yeah. It's a yeah. feel good story, and you have to like I it. I have to like it. <laughs> yeah. Buy aviation gin. Have you seen the? Did you see the Wrexham documentary? You know, you know, there was a lot of nice stuff on there. A lot Mu of nice stuff on there. Much like the Newcastle one. Yeah, similar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky underdog. What would you rather? Ryan Reynolds talking about Wrexham Ryan Reynolds. going round. Definitely Ryan Reynolds. Or Amanda Staveley. Yeah. What, what does she call everybody? Pet? No, that would be uh, too Georgie. Angel. Angel. Angel, that's right. Hello, Angel. How are you doing, Angel? <laughs> Angel. <laughs> 
Again, <laughs> has basically seen the angel of the north. Yeah. Fine. That'll do. Hello. That'll do. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.